Minister Mike today who's going to come and share us the word. And I love you for just receiving us all of the gifts you know, that we have. Come on, he comes in his own way. I, I make space for uh, our young men to just come. And, you know, and Brother Mike is, is a heavyweight. Amen. So you, you got the flow, doctor. <laughs> Kind of just really getting to the core of the truth rather than well, this has been the topic of our, our conversation the last couple of Sundays on um, religion versus spirituality. On um, the last, um, the last I spoke last Sunday, even Pastor talk was was saying that um, was pointing to the fact that we are a reflection of God. We are God manifest in this earth realm, God being the foundation of all being, the source of everything. Everything that is comes from that. And God animates everything, even us. And We know that inherently, intellectually, but 
who is it that really that really knows? We come and we we've been given you know a set of beliefs to, to think and to point to God by, but who is it that really knows God or knows or knows himself through God? Like who who is this knower? Who is this who is this I that knows God? I can say I know God, but who am I? Okay. I'm standing here. I say I am standing here in, in the physical, pointing to that thing, but who is this? Who is this I? Um, is it Michael Kent? That's a name that was given to me at the time of my birth. I could very, very well be named Tomato, you know, but that no, no, that no way affects who I am in my core, in my spirit. Am I this body? No. Um, this is this is what this is an expression of what I am, of what God. This is an expression of the Spirit through me. Am I my thoughts? Those are just still something that a deeper I senses because. If that were me, there were, I would only be thoughts and I could, there would be no control or manipulation or rationality behind it. And it points to how we are a reflection of God. God is the knower behind all things. The observer of all things. That silent power that animates all things. You, that's what animates your body. That's what causes you to breathe. You don't have to think about it. You just are, all right? And we identify ourselves as black, white, Christian, Jew, Republican, Democrat. All these labels are just that, labels to differentiate. And where there is differentiation, there is contention. But that's not what God is. God is one. It is the unity that underlines everything in the universe. And Christ is that personification. Okay. Of, that, of that underlying principle. And separating yourself from that is when you fall into what they call sin. Mm -hmm. And I reached a point in my life where I've been to church pretty much all of my life. Um, and I'm a student, I, I love gathering knowledge and I love, and I'm gonna get to some scripture in a little bit, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I'm, gonna go bad with, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go left there a little bit too, but I'm gonna circle back around and uh, put it in context that's more familiar, but seeing Christians and, and knowing the history of this country, knowing the history of our faith, seeing how in the name of God entire continents and cultures were ravaged, um, people killed and murdered, I began to question this, this title that I gave myself, Christianity. Why are lovers of God so murderous and hurtful? Is that what God is? Come on. Come on now. Kill people. What? And then kill people who just have a different language for expressing what God is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I felt there had to be something deeper. Mm -hmm. And religion is one of our core beliefs. It becomes your identity. You know, like I am a Christian, so I'm like, if this, if I'm a Christian, and that's what Christendom is, mm. I don't want to be that. Yeah. It's not, that doesn't sit right with my spirit. So I started searching for a deeper truth. I read about every religion I could find. Because people try to put a label on God. And act like they dominate it. But I can tell you this. If you can fit, if you can fit God in a one pound book, that's not God. Okay? But what you can do, you can't even contain it in your brain, but what you can do is point to it. So I want to read you a little bit, I'm going to 
going to get to some scripture, I promise. But it's maybe I'm going to read you a little something of a book from some Eastern philosophies. This one is the Bhagavad Gita. Right? It's called The Field and the Knower. And his name may sound familiar. Krishna is a Hindu. Uh, very similar, and you know, it almost sounds like Christ, right? Krishna. But listen, listen to the words. And it will sound like someone you may know. The body is called a field, Arjuna. The one who knows is called the knower of the field. This is the knowledge of those who know. I am the knower of the field and everyone. Knowledge of the field is its knower. Knowledge of the field and its knower is true knowledge. Listen, I will, I will explain the nature of the field and how, the, how change takes place within it. I will describe the knower of the field and his power. These truths have been sung by great sages in a variety of ways and expounded in precise arguments concerning Brahman, which is God. Another, another word for it. The field of our journey is made of the following five areas of sense perception. The five sense organs, the five organs of action, three components of the mind, and the undifferentiated energy, which all these have evolved, which is essentially the spirit. And this field arises the desire, aversion, pleasure, pain, body, and intelligence. Those who know truly are free from pride and deceit. They are gentle, forgiving, upright and pure, devoted to their spiritual teacher, filled with inner strength and self-control, detached from sense objects, self-will, and they have learned the painful lesson of separate birth and suffering, old age, disease, and death. They are free from selfish attachment. They do not get compulsively entangled in the home and the family. They are even-minded through good fortune and bad. Their devotion to me is undivided enjoying solitude and not following the crowd. They seek only me. This is true knowledge, to seek the self, capital S, as a true end of wisdom always. To seek anything else is ignorance. I will tell you the wisdom that leads to immortality. The beginningless Brahman, in another network for God, which can be called neither being nor non-being. Transcends throughout, that's my addition. It dwells in all, in every hand, and in every foot, and in every head, in every mouth, in every eye, and ear in the universe. Without senses itself, it shines through, functioning all of the senses, completely independent. It supports all things beyond the ganas. It, it enjoys their play. It is both near and far, both within and without, in every creature it moves and is unmoving. It is subtlety beyond comprehension. It is indivisible, yet it appears divided and separate creatures. Know it to be the creator, the preserver, and the destroyer, dwelling in every heart. It is beyond darkness. It is called the light of light, object and goal of knowledge, and knowledge itself. All right. The only way to know God is hidden. Amen. Nothing outside can give that to you. They can point to it. But the only way to know God is to be still and know. It's time out for separation of God's people. As powerful and as infinite and eternal as we know God is, every life is its own religion. Every person, every spirit has its purpose. Every atom, every molecule, its life is its religion. And if you worship God in the truth of knowing that this is all connected, and in love, you are living by that spirit. I'm going to go to the Bible for a bit. We're going to see what... Nah, I have a King James Bible very, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I have them and put it up on my phone.
And you're going to hear a little echo of, of some of the concepts here. This is, uh, this is um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden, and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, it was written, no, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, these things God has prepared for those who love them. These things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Sounds familiar? For who knows a person's thought except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught to us by human wisdom, but in words taught to us by spirit, explaining spiritual realities with spirit-taught words. The person without spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about these things, and such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So I want to talk a little bit about our spirit. Our people. I remember growing up in the country, small church. Early Sunday morning, I would go with my Aunt Christine Zelda. Used to watch them when I was a kid. And church didn't even have central, central air, heat, just little gas lit stoves, gas lit up gas uh, heaters. And the, old, and the old ladies there would sit and moan. system of this country in the fields working slave and enduring all of that hell they gave us the Bible and they took any scripture out of it referring to the Israelites fighting against the leaving Egypt or any, any reference to masters mistreating their servants wrongly being a sin about compliance. And we bore that pain and built a nation. That 
that's power. It's the foundation of capitalism because without our initial investment of blood and sweat, there will be no wall yes, in America. Lord. Our music, that soul, that pain that people enjoy so much, yeah. that spirit that's in our music that people copy all over the world, mm -hmm. that those groans are where that comes from. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. You can't fake feeling. You can't fake pain. Mm -hmm. You can't fake soul. That's the power of our spirit. Mm -hmm. That strength that they exploit for entertainment and sports. Right, the athletic ability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That strength that they feel that they have to lock us up in prisons. On, the realness. Black power. Black power. We are God's people. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. We are God's people. Oh, yeah. You see, power is defined as the ability to do something or act in a particular way. It's the essence of a, of a, of a thing. It's what it is. It's the capacity to direct or influence others for the course of events. It is the supply of energy. It's the ability to accelerate movement or travel. And that power has been exploited by force. which is defined as coercion or compulsion, especially with the use of threat or violence, to make something or some, make someone or something do or operate against their will. But, God isn't the God that we've been given. God for lack of a better word is known by that strength inside you when you feel like you can't go with it. God is that voice that wills you to fight on. That thing that that thing that you can only point to inside yourself that won't let you stop. You can call it love. You can call it passion. Desire. It's that thing inside you that hears your prayers and reinforces itself within you. It's that thing when realness or the spirit and someone else resonates with you and you see God in them. Mm -hmm. It can't be fake. Yeah. It can't be duplicated. Yeah. You can't replace it with alcohol or liquor. Mm -hmm. You can't replace it with sex. You can't replace it with Going to church and singing in the choir. Amen. Come on. Amen. You can't replace it with being a good citizen. You can't replace it with repeating scriptures and prayers. To know God. is to have God live a life through you. And that's a power that we have to shape nations. Yes, yes. So I want to leave you with this.
always take a moment to go to your quiet place. Man. Without, even without this, without any signs or symbols or anything that you've been spoon fed yeah. and tell, to tell you who or what God is. Yeah. Just be quiet. Mm. Yeah. Put your attention on your heart. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Look and listen. Mm -hmm. And find God there. Yes, Lord. In that pain you feel, the things that you long for, that is your purpose. And the joy and love that you feel when things are just as they need to be and you know that they couldn't have turned out any other way but for that thing that you can't even name. Come on. And sit and feel what it's like to be alive in Christ. And that will give you a peace and a courage and the power that nothing can take from you. Yes. And that's who we are. Yes. That's what our people have. Yes. That's what our people have. Mm -hmm. And we forever will. Yes. Keep God first. Yes. And every moment of your life will be fulfilled. Yes, sir. You will see God even in malicious acts of other people. Come on. Because teach, they will teach you to be even more compassionate. Come on. Teach you to be strong. Teach you how to love. Mm -hmm. And you can take even more peace that you are that light in the world that makes this place a better, on, a better world for everyone around. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I love you all. Go in peace. Go in power. Yes, Lord. Go in Christ. Yes. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.